Now we are ready to create this high level logic that will select the direction to move our enemy so that it can reach the target. If you are wondering what is the circle, this is from the obstacle avoidance, just uncheck the show gizmos to uh, remove this. Great. So now let's go to our scripts folder and let's create last script that we will, will be needing. Let's call this uh, context solver. And let's open it up. Okay, so let me paste the code here. At the top, we are going to have some fields connected to showing the gizmo. So bull flag show gizmo, float array interest gizmo vector to result direction. So the direction to have selected and the private float array length so that we can draw gizmos uh, for this result direction. In the start, we're going to create a new float of eight parameters. This is again for the gizmo. And next we are going to have this public vector to get the direction to move. And this is the method that we are going to use. We are going to pass here the list of steering behaviors. So this logic will not run inside our enemy AI directly. We are going to call this context solver to run this for us. And we are going to pass the AI data, AI data. Now we will need to have the float danger and float interest as a new arrays of uh, with eight places in them. And for each steering behavior behavior in behaviors, we are going to run the same logic that we have already run in our enemy AI. Now it will be placed in this class. So now we have all the uh, danger and interest uh, weights. So we need to subtract the interest, uh, the danger values from the interest values. And this is this for loop. For eight directions, we are going to call interest i equals math f dot clamp zero one interest minus danger for this position i. So for this specific direction, this is how we are going to remove the directions that we do not want to use for movement. In case, for example, we are very close to an obstacle, this interest direction will be set basically to zero. Now we can cache the interest gizmo uh, array to, to contain these interest values in case we want to print them on the screen as gizmo. Next, we need to get the average direction. As I have mentioned, if we select only the best or the highest value inside the interest array, we are going to get this uh, rigid movement. So instead, we are going to calculate the average direction by simply looping for eight directions inside our interest array. And we are going to get the output as uh, the addition of the direction times the weight inside the interest array. Now, when we have this, all we need to do is normalize it and we are going to get the result. And basically this is it what we need for our movement. So we're going to assign to this result direction, the output direction for the sake of being able to draw the gizmo and we are going to return the result direction. At the bottom, we have the gizmo code. Again, everything is uh, available for you on GitHub. Uh, the link will be in the description if you want to check any issue, if you have any issues with the code or you want to check some logic. Okay, so now let's save this and we can go back to Unity. Okay, great. All we need to do is add another child, for example, to those steering behaviors. Right click, create, and let's create a context solver. And let's uh, make sure that this has the transform 000. Let's drag here our context solver. And this is it. Now we need to reopen our enemy AI script, the high level script that will run all the logic for our AI system. Okay, we already have some logic, but we are going to delete this for each loop and the danger and interest arrays. And we are going to keep the steering behaviors list as we are going to pass them to our solver. And of course, this will be a very simple, naive implementation of this AI system. For a more advanced implementation using the finite state machine, check out my video course Make a Juicy 2D Shooter, the link will be in the description. Okay, so first of all, I will need to add here some parameters, some fields. So in my case, the enemy AI in my, in my enemy controller or my agent controller takes in the on attack information as well as the vector two values when we want to move and we, when we want to start pointing in the direction of the target. So I will use Unity events for this to send this data to our to my script that drives my agent. You can have a different logic. All you need to do is make sure that you can assign a method to those events. For now, let me right click here, quick action and say using Unity engine.events, it will appear at the top. 
and now I will be able to send vector to info or just the info to call some method using Unity events and I will explain how to assign them when we finish writing this script. Now beside this I will cache the movement input based on the sick behaviors that we have uh, created so we are going to have serious field private vector to movement input. Now, of course, we need to have a reference to our context solver. So we're going to have serious field private context solver movement direction solver. Now, since we have this detection delay, we may want to have also an AI update delay and the attack delay. So those are the parameters that allow us to, for example, stop the enemy from constantly attacking when it is close to the enemy to the player. We're going to have a delay that every one second the attack will commence from our enemy towards the target and the AI update delay when while we may want to update the detectors uh, often or less often we may want to do the same with our AI to change the behavior of our AI we may want not to do this in every frame but every 0.06 of a second so this is this parameter again this is for the performance reasons if you want to uh, make your game a bit more performant you may want to run your AI a bit less often now, since we have this attack delay, we want to also know how close should we be to be able to attack our player. So I'm going to create a serialized field private float attack distance equals 0.5f. So if we are 0.5f from the player, we are going to start attacking instead of, start, uh, instead of continuing to move. Okay, we have almost all the parameters. Last thing is the bull following equals false. Now this bull flag will allow us to distinct if we are chasing the player or not. So we can of course call it chase, but I have called it follow. Basically, if we were using a more advanced logic, so for example, finite state machine or behavior tree, we would not need those bull flags. But since we are using a very naive implementation, we will have this to help us with our logic. Okay, let's slide it down and I'm going to paste my code. Okay. So just below the perform detection method that we have called in this invoke repeating, we are going to have an update method. So private void update. And what we need to do is split our logic into phases. So enemy AI movement based on the target availability. So if we want to start chasing, basically. So if AI data dot current target is not null, this means that there is a chance that we have some targets. So on pointer input question mark dot invoke AI data dot current uh, target dot position, this might be uh, a, a, vec a vector zero or a vector towards our target. Now this target is assigned below. So if we do not have a current target, we are going to call else if we have a some transform reference inside our target so this get targets dot count is greater than zero we're going to assign a data current target equals the value at the position zero but as you might recall in our seek behavior we already did something similar so we have selected the uh, target based on the the distance towards our uh, enemy so basically it will select the closest target but if we do not have any target we are not going to be able to run our ai this is why this else if statement will find us a target okay and we are going to constantly call on movement input invoke movement input this is why we have cached this value we are going to update it whenever something changes for now it is zero so the enemy will simply stop and not move but if we change it, the enemy will immediately start moving based on this logic that is assigned as a listener to this event. Okay, so here is our coroutine. Chase and attack I enumerator. This is a, the return type. And here we have this first if statement. What happens when we have no target? If the AI data dot current target is equal to null, we want to simply stop with debug.log stopping. We assign movement input to be vector 2.0 to stop our enemy from moving. We are setting following to be false and we are calling yield return null, or we can call yield break to simply exit this coroutine immediately. Okay, so else if we have our target, now we have to calculate the distance to our target calling vector 2. distance. AI data current target position and transform position 
And what we need to do now is check if the distance is less than the attack distance. In this case, we want to simply perform the attack logic. So we set movement input to zero. We call on attack pressed question mark dot invoke and we yield return a new wait for seconds using the attack delay as the uh, time that we need to wait since the coroutine will resume after this delay and we want to resume by calling again the same coroutine so that we can again invoke the same logic. Now else, if we are further from the player, we want to call the chase logic, which simply sets the movement input to the movement direction solver, which is our context solver reference, get direction to move, we pass the string behaviors list and the AI data, and we are going to get the correct direction which we should use for the movement. We are going to yield return new weight for seconds, and we are going to now use AI update delay which allows us to control how often we call the AI logic in our game. And next we have the start code in chase and attack again called, because if we are chasing, then the only way to exit it is if the current target is equal to null. Okay, and this is it. So now we have our enemy AI script ready. So let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. Great. So let's select our enemy and as you might recall, I have already mentioned that we are going to use those events to control the behavior of my uh, of the enemy. And in my case, I have already mentioned that my agent script controls the weapon and the agent mover script that is responsible for moving my player or my agent in the game. And the enemy is of course an agent, so all I need to do is assign this enemy AI script on it, and now I can use those events to control the uh, behavior of the enemy. So I'm going to select this on attack press, add uh, a listener using this plus icon. I'm going to do the same for the rest of those events. And all I need to do is assign my agent. And my agent has a function in the agent script. And I have this perform attack method, which allows me to swing the weapon. Now, I want to look at the player when I'm swinging my weapon. So in the on pointer input, I need to assign the agent. So agent script, and I have this pointer input property, I will set it to the direction or the position of the player or the target that the enemy has discovered. And in the on movement input, I'm going to again assign the agent, I'm going to select the agent script, and I have this movement input, which will basically make my enemy move towards the player. Now we have also created a reference to the movement direction solver, which is our context solver. I need to assign the reference here at the bottom of the inspector, and this should be it. Now the context solver has gizmos, so we should be able to see the decisions that our enemy makes based on the position of the player. So let me stop the enemy from moving by setting the agent mover max speed to be zero. And I'm going to press play just for us to see what is the result of the context solver. Okay, let me disable the ground. And you can see this yellow line represents the direction that the enemy wants to take. Let me move the player and as you can see the direction is changing. Now if I move the enemy because we are close to the obstacle, if I move the enemy, as you can see the yellow line points a bit away from the player because there is an obstacle in the way and we do not have those green lines representing the possible directions near this obstacle because the enemy wants to avoid going near the obstacle. As you can see now we can see that the uh, direction is pointing still towards the player and the idea here is that if I move behind, behind the obstacle and the enemy doesn't see the player since we have stopped updating the position because the enemy does not see the player anymore we are going to move here and the enemy is uh, able to move here it will just move here and find the player again okay so let's try playing this uh, with the enemy moving so let me set the max speed to be 2 and let's press play Okay, let's see what happens if I get close to our enemy. Now it has uh, followed me and it has hit me. Now I'm running away from the enemy and I'm going into this tight spot between those obstacles. And as you can see, the enemy is finding his way around those obstacles. If I get out of his sight, it will not be able to pursue me because it has the last seen position. Now I will try again, go into the tight path between those obstacles as you can see the enemy is able to follow me now it is all about picking those parameters but as I can, as you can see if i hide behind this obstacle it tries to reach me uh, going around this obstacle if i go around this obstacle and hide 
as you can see now enemy is uh, standing still because it has reached the last position that it has seen where it has seen the player and now it is shooting the ray cast it is hitting this obstacle so it doesn't see me if i get closer to it in this viewing range as you can see now it is following me okay thanks a lot for watching i hope that you have found this video tutorial useful if you did leave a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel or click the thanks button it would really help me a lot okay see you in the next tutorial